one of those days where you just don't want to go outside and do anything. So what do you do on those kind of days? Well, for one thing, day drinking and just cook all day. Why not? Hello and welcome once again to Cooking Under the Influence with me, your host and chef du jour. I'm Sean. The key to day drinking, as everyone in New Orleans knows, is to pace yourself. So what's on the agenda for today? Let's have some tarragon juleps. I made those a while back and they were really good. Boil your water. Get you some sugar. It's not hard. Remember, simple syrup. Go to the garden, get you a few sprigs of tarragon out of your herb pots or whatever. Rinse it off because bugs. Your Magnolite pot of water, Magnolite, the bachelor's friend. And once your water is boiling, just take your little bouquet of tarragon, flowers and all, that's fine. Tarragon doesn't, tarragon just smells like weeds. That's why you have to make a simple syrup. Turn it off, throw your bouquet of tarragon in there, and let it cool. I know you have to pace yourself, but I'm not stupid. We need something to drink in the meantime. It's 1.46 in the afternoon, so that means bourbon would be a great choice. Cheers. Let's start with something simple. Let's start with the staff of life. Bread. Alright, remember when we're baking, we kind of have to measure reasonably well. And bread, easy as it is, it can be finicky. So don't fuck it up. I'm going to get six cups of flour, two little quarter ounce packs of yeast. What is yeast? It's bacteria. It's got to come to life. We're going to make it come to life by feeding it. A little bit of yeast. I mean a little bit of flour. Get some sugar. That's like a tablespoon. All right, that's like a cup of water. That's going to take a few minutes to do, so we're going to give that some time. A couple of spoons of kosher salt. Not too much. All right, let's get a little more sugar. Maybe another tablespoon. And the substance of choice for fetishists everywhere, Crisco. Yeah, I'm not going to delve too much into that. I'm just going to let you Google it. A couple of tablespoons of Crisco. All right, my friend Mark got here. Hi, Mark. Say hi. Say hi. Uh, all right. He's going to have to wait for the... Uh, tarragon juleps because that simple syrup is not ready yet, remember. Oh, you made that just for me? No. That's the key to southern hospitality, is when someone comes to your house, you offer them a drink. But remember, day drinking, you have to pace yourself. We already covered that in the video, remember? How about burning a coke? I have to pace myself. A wise man once told me. <laughs> I could not handle going to Commander's Palace to that Worry about dropping food on your Worry clothes. about <laughs> dropping food on my seersucker suit. So where were we before we were so cordially interrupted? Okay, so you remember our yeast? Look, it turned into a big cup of, looks like, foamy diarrhea. It's like a yeast infection almost. <laughs> Ooh, doesn't that make your bread tasty? Doesn't that sound, sound enticing? Yeah. Let's mix that in there, and we're going to get another cup of water. Let's mix all this stuff up. Make it into dough. You know what dough is, right? It's a deer. A female deer. A female deer. Ray, a drop of golden sun. Please don't sing. Now it's time to get needy. Are you needy? My dogs are needy. Me, a name I call myself. Okay, I've been needing here for 12 minutes, all by myself. That's not Far a long, long way to run. Nice elastic consistency after about 10 minutes of kneading. What does kneading do? It activates the gluten. Don't get me started on fucking gluten. I've already had my rant on that. So, a needle pulling thread. Is it gonna rise? You let it rise probably an hour or two till it's twice its size. It will rise to the occasion. Rise to the occasion, just like a porn star. La, no to follow so. Oh my god, that's so effing good. What is that? 
That's the simple syrup for the oh, tarragon and tulips. Right. Simple syrup. Oh, yeah. Big old John Stop it. That's just what I wanted to tell you. Go about, I don't know, halfway up the glass. Sure, that sounds good. <laughs> the rest of the way, we're going to cover it up with bourbon. Or your fuzzy slippers in the grocery store. Fuzzy slippers in the grocery store. That was yesterday. I think I better pace myself with this. This is seductively smooth. Mm. What shall we cook? Let's find out what's in the fridge. Pork ribs. Ooh. Some pork ribs and we'll make some homemade barbecue sauce. Oh my God. Experimental cooking 101. Mm. Actually, this would be more like 401. We're just gonna char them real quick. Get a nice sear on them. How does that look? Oh, that's nice. We'll do them on the other side. Let's flip them. Ooh, it's fiery. See? All right. We're yep. just going to get the outside kind of cooked. We don't care about the inside yet. How good does that look? That's a lot of meat. That's what she said. <laughs> so, the best way to do pork, low and slow heat. We just grilled the outside, so let's actually cook them now. We're going to do these in the crock pot. Put your crock pot on high. God, that looks so freaking good. Doesn't it look good? Let's put those in the crock pot. Let them crock. Because crock is a verb. I don't usually care for barbecue sauce, but I do today. So let's make some homemade experimental barbecue sauce. Let's start out with some a can of tomatoes. How about some molasses? That sounds barbecue-ish. Oh my god, this is all tight. I can't open it. There, this is apple cider vinegar. Okay. Some, uh, ooh, I've only got a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Let's do a panoply of spices. A what? Panoply of spices. Cayenne pepper. Cumin, because cumin. Red pepper flakes. And what goes well with tomatoes? Basil. And some garlic powder. Some onion powder would be great, but I don't have any onion powder. So let's do onions. Don't cry while you're doing the onions. Don't cry for me, Argentina. The truth is I never left you. And let's use a dollop of Creole mustard in there, too. Oh, that's good stuff. Oh, I have horseradish. I bet you that'll be good. Let's use our stick blender because it's got this nice little blade on the end of it, mm -hmm. so it'll chop all the coarse bits up. All right, let's see how this tastes. Nice and smooth. It means something. Taste it. Butter. <gasps> Butter. Butter. Could I suggest some garlic, maybe? <laughs> More garlic? Absolutely. Yeah. All right, let's do some Worcestershire sauce and just a little Tabasco right here in Louisiana. from right here in Louisiana. That's it. I think we have it. I think we have it. I don't know what we could add to it to make it better. Let's slow cook our newly made barbecue sauce with our ribs. We're gonna go for a good four hours of that. I have to wait four hours? Let's just take the remainder of this and slow slow cook it on the stove because why not? In the meantime, look what else has risen to the occasion. Huh? Check out that dough. Amazing. I didn't know it would get that big. Of course, that's what she said. <laughs> That may totally go in the video. I like that one. <laughs> well, thank you. What is this device? This is a Silpat. This is called punching it down. You just get the air out of there. Not to be confused with punching the clown. That's a completely different process. But it's very nice and smooth. Get a knife, cut this in quarters. Ooh, it's like cutting a balloon. I guess this is what like doing a boot job is surgery wise. I've got a baguette baking thing. How perfect is that? With two smaller buns and one big bun. And a couple of French baguettes. Let's cover it back over with our oil plastic. 
Let it rise, yet again, second rising. Okay, it's been a little while. These have risen nicely. So have the baguettes of French bread. Now how do you bake it? 400. Look how big the baguettes wow. have gotten. I know, huh? Awesome. Talk about rising to the occasion. Say. Oh, my ice is not, I don't have any ice. That's tragic. That is sad. Well, there's only one thing to do. Sipping whiskey. Ooh. My father-in-law, he's Irish. Shocker. Poured me, poured me a shot of Jameson and said, you're walking this thing and you're a whisker. And I said, some ice? He looked at me and said, ice. What do you mean, ice? Like, just, just neat, straight, that's fine, no problem. I'm not sure I put that in the video. Oise. Is the Irish word for whiskey is ishkabaha, which literally translated means water of life, which I can totally get behind. Do you butter your bread before you bake it? Uh, that's a very good question. That's what I said. Gonna, I'm not going to put butter on the bread. I'm going to put a little bit of water on the bread. Why water? Because water makes... A nice little crust. Oh. It makes it crispy on the outside. Turn our high rib down to low. It's been, I guess, an hour. So after an hour on high, let's turn it down to low. I could do do a deer, a female deer, Please. ray a drop of golden sun. A little bit of water. Just brush it on over there. I got a peaceful, easy feeling. I can't remember the words either. A bouquet of broccoli. Okay, my question is, if you've just got this one crown of broccoli, why do you have this rubber bandy thing that's not holding anything together? It's just fucking around the stalk. All this broccoli part is flower buds. That's the part you eat, flower buds. And we're just going to separate this into more or less bite-sized florets because this is going to be awesome. Trust me. Bag of broccoli. Let's do something with that. All right. Get you a bunch of olive oil. Put a good bit of that in there because broccoli absorbs a lot of olive oil. I had an uncle named Bag of Broccoli. He died in the consumption in the troubles. Well, I'm almost out of kosher salt, so here's just regular salt. Garlic powder. Here, let me toss your salad there. Whoa. That's what she said. That's what she <laughs> said. <laughs> hey, I would put it straight into the oven, but the oven's occupied with bread. I bought this tuna. It's a bunch of little, nice little tuna steaks are gorgeous. Trying to decide how to do that. Open before thawing? Oh, now you tell me. All right, tuna, what do you want to be marinated with? All right, so we'll get a little wasabi powder, some soy sauce, put a bunch of that in there. This is an experiment. This may turn out terrible. I don't know. We don't know how it's going to turn out. How do I want to cook this? I don't know. <laughs> this looks extremely pleasant. How does that look? Freaking freshly baked bread. Ooh, need some butter and honey on it. I know. <laughs> what? It looks like nipples. <laughs> it looks like nipples. Yes. <laughs> what these little do did? They do yeah. look like nipples. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right. So that leaves us our rock. Oops. Shit. And let's pop that in the oven. This is still on. Go to your garden and get you a green onion. We got a little more tarragon too. We're going to do a Bernays sauce. So if you know how to do a Bernays, you can fast forward. Just a very little bit of water. Put the juice of a half a lemon in there. Separate your eggs. I've shown you how to do it several times. Take it off the heat when it starts to look like scrambled eggs. Once it's decent thickness, Let's add some butter to it. 
Well, now we have a hollandaise sauce. Now we're going to make a béarnaise sauce. Now you can use white wine if you want, that's fine. We're going to use a few tablespoons of vinegar. Put some green onions in there. Alright, so now we've got our tarragon. Let's put that in there, chopped up nicely. Béarnaise. Don't get saucy with me, Béarnaise. Shit, I wasn't recording. God damn it. Oh, man. I put the tuna on the grill. And I got the, I got the pretty line. We're going to do sides of the tuna now. Look how pretty that looks. But the tuna, you put it on the grill for not even a minute. This is all day cooking. Ow. Shit, I hurt my ass. How do you know it's done? You got the little charred black tips on the ends of the florets. That's what we're looking for. Look at these ribs. Oh my god, it's just a big giant plate of vegetarian nightmare. Mm. I know, we're going to drizzle that over the tuna. This broccoli is kip ash. Pork ribs. I didn't even have any disasters. That is freaking awesome. Oh, now I had a disaster. Ooh, nice and pink in the middle. How do you like that bread? Delicious. Okay, from all of us here at Cooking Under the Influence, enjoy your meal, your tuna, your béarnaise sauce, your broccoli, your pork, and your homemade bread. And I highly recommend you get a tarragon julep, because that shit is the bomb.com. Until next time, bon appétit, and adios. One, two, three, four.